uh, the authorities be are listening or could hear us that to say, look, in the tech space, please open the doors for us, especially transport, especially anything software and tech. That way you're going to find a lot of guys who have developed platforms, who are developing platforms to say local. This is a solution for this industry. This is a solution for whatever market that is. Oh, and, and of course, a lot of the violence that we see in the e-hailing industry often stems from rivalry uh -huh. between the e-hailing drivers and metered taxi drivers. Sometimes it's even the public taxi drivers fighting with the metered taxi drivers. Uh -huh. So how does your company, Taxi, aim to resolve some of those issues? And welcome to IT Web TV. My name is Siba Lemalinga, and I'm joined in studio today by Prince Pekerisi. Prince is the co-founder of South Africa's latest e-hailing company, that's Taxi, and he's also a tech entrepreneur. Well, we know too well that South Africa's e-hailing industry has been catalyzed by violence, crime, as well as anti-competitive prices. So Prince is going to be talking to us about how he plans to deal with these issues and also about what really distinguishes his company from what's available in the market. Prince, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to IT Web TV. Thank you so much, uh, Sebastian. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Well, Prince, we have been following your story for a while, and uh, we know that you've been in the tech industry for many, many years, but you've also been in South Africa's ride-hailing industry for a couple of years. That's when you launched your first e-hailing company, Emergency Taxi. Uh -huh. Let's perhaps start by getting an understanding of what drew you to the e-hailing industry, which is really quite a competitive industry. It's not a very industry. We've seen many companies come and go in this industry what inspired you to launch this company yeah well um i think one of the first things that came uh since i've been in the tech space was the issue that our cyber spaces are very vulnerable right now meaning that uh there's a lot of we don't have domestic or indigenous platforms that run our systems within our countries most of our tech is imported whether it's software that you find uh, people using at your point of sale, in your, in your shop where you buy, whether it's government software that, m that is mostly used. At some point, we don't have stuff that we develop here, and then we run from here, and then we save from here, from our own servers. Our information is not even vulnerable when we do it here. So that's one of the things that also uh, pushed me into do it. But uh, th the major thing that pushed me into e-hailing, I'd say, was the unfairness in the industry, was the question that always came to me when I took an Uber at some point or I took, you know, one of the ride-hailing apps. You would find the meter taxi guys who would be fighting the, the, the drivers who would be driving on the ground. So I began to ask them, what is the problem? They told us that, look, the problem is there's these apps, they used to call them, there's these apps that have come into our industry and taken our, our market. Um, for me... I did not take it in the sense to say it's apps. I took it to say here is a problem. How do we solve a problem within our market, within our industry? And what is the loophole? So for me, the same way that we had those invasions done in the 18 or something, mm -hmm. that's the same thing that's happening in our tech space right now. We, we, we are very vulnerable. We are naked, I would use that word. We, we, we are freely giving out work that should actually be creating jobs. Year in, year out, when there's elections, government speaks about creation of jobs. Us as entrepreneurs, as you know, business people, we register companies, we start running the companies, and then we fail because of sometimes unfair competition, sometimes less muscle power. But that's one of the things that drew me to say, look, I'm not going to tire from this. Let's move. That's why you mentioned that we had emergency taxi from the start, because that was our, our learning curve as we started emergency taxi at that point. We learned a lot in the industry, uh, and we're here today. You know, there's a lot of things that you begin to see, legislation and all these things, what other companies are doing to try and jump that. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely come to the legislation and safety issues yeah. later on in the conversation. But let's talk about taxi. 
You've yeah. mentioned the many issues that come up in the industry. The, oh, and, and of course, a lot of the violence that we see in the e-hailing industry often stems from rivalry uh -huh. between the e-hailing drivers and meter taxi drivers. Sometimes it's even the public taxi drivers fighting with the meter taxi drivers. Uh -huh. So how does your company, Taxi, aim to resolve some of those issues? Yeah, look, you know, transport is um, it's a very dynamic uh, space in this country. And if you don't understand it, you bring a software or you bl bring a platform from wherever and then you try to impose it to a market that's already behaving somehow, you're going to face a lot of issues. That's why you see these labor issues that are being faced now with drivers. There's issues of... Uh, there's wage issues. There's wage issues. They there's compa complain of unfair working yes, conditions. Yes, there's a lot of things that drivers have. So for us, I'll tell you... Okay, so... Uh, an app, I, would, uh, I don't like to use the term e-hailing because it's an urban dictionary term. So hailing via the software or the app, it can happen on any other platform. So with our app, it's mostly that we are focusing on the issues on the ground that affect the operator and the issues that affect the user of the platform. So those are our unique selling points that we have. So firstly, we had to fix the issue of what's happening to solve the problem within the industry. So number one, we've just spoken of, uh, of, of, of this issue of exploitation, as the, I would say the drivers put it. Uh, so we have partnered uh, with uh, Santaco Meter Taxi um, and the mainstream as well, Santaco itself, to say we are, according to the Lehutla resolutions that we've done in 2020, that uh, a local platform must operate and it must, there's a few things that were spoken there that have to do with indigenization of platforms. So we developed the platform and uh, that's one of the unique things that we have. So we concentrate on safety for both the rider and the, and the driver or the operator. We concentrate much on the benefits that are there for the driver. So the benefits that we have for the driver is, a, a driver is not just a driver, but he's a business person. Um, I would call them operators, not a driver, because an operator and a driver are two different people, because an mm -hmm. operator holds an operator's license. So the operators are business people. We have a unique business proposition for them. Um, unfortunately, I can't say it on air because of competition that we do have out there, but there's a lot of benefits that comes to the owners of the vehicles in terms of slots, in terms of the value chain itself on the business and sharing itself. Then even our percentage that we take from drivers is about 20%, it's not much. Um, and then the industry itself, according to the Lehutla resolutions, is also benefiting from the platform. Um, we've got issues of safety for the driver where before a trip starts, uh, a rider must issue an OTP one-time pin to the driver, and the driver must take a picture of the person getting inside their vehicle, whether it's the person who is requested or the person who has been requested for who is intending to take the ride. That's one of the features. Then there is a feature that we're introducing now, which is a facial recognition system as well. And then uh, most beneficial to both the rider and the driver is that the platform is zero-rated. So you, the same way you use your FNB app when you don't have data on any other platform is the same way that you're going to be using our platform. Wow, sounds yeah. very interesting. Uh -huh. But perhaps let's just get a better understanding of the business model. Uh -huh. You talk of Santaco. Uh -huh. You talk of a partnership with Santaco. Uh -huh. And of course, that for me is revolutionary because we've seen the e-hailing drivers being at odds with the Santaco representatives who are the metered, the, the metered taxi drivers in uh -huh. this instance. You know, So it sounds like you are actually bringing the two parties that have been at odds from inception of the e-hailing industry in South Africa and you are actually saying, hang on, there is a common ground here. You guys can actually work together because after all, you are in the same industry. So you can work together, unite, and both benefit from this. So tell us more about that partnership at, and what Santaco brings into the collaboration with your company, uh, being, of course, the organization that is a regulatory body for the taxi industry in South Africa. Yeah, look, I, I, I like the last part that you just gave now to say Santiago is the regulatory board. So this was re-emphasized in 2020, the Lohutla resolutions, where um, it was then 
uh, officially announced again, I'm sure for the, I don't know how many times, that Santaco is the apex body for taxis in this country. So whether you're using a meter taxi, you're using a combi, you're using a chartered service, as long as you've got that operator's uh, permit, you are fall under that council. So Santaco stands for South Africa uh, National Taxi Council meaning that it's a council that is the same as your nursing council, it's a board for transport. So there's no way that you're coming in with the service and you can't partner with the operators. Because for us, we don't, we don't, we don't work with drivers. We work with the operators. The drivers drive for the operators. For you to be on our platform, you see even when you download the app, it will ask you for the operator's permit as well. So we need that. We know that there's a delay from departments and stuff, but that's another story for, for, for another time. However, we have partnered with Santaco for the sake of peace, for the sake of reconciliation within the, the industry to clear the mess that was put in. Be because ordinarily, with other e-hailing companies, the partnership is between the driver and the company. Yes. And in many instances the e-hailing company does not even know who the owner of the vehicle is. For sure. So, you know, um, you know what I call pirate operators is anyone who buys a car now, takes it to any platform that operates ride-sharing apps and puts his car on that platform. And it's illegal for a company to accept a person who doesn't have an operator's license because they already they're creating a, a problem. I'll give you an example now. So, but let's say you've made 500,000 now from wherever and mm -hmm. then you decide, let me buy a combi. Where is your combi going to operate? It has to be registered somewhere officially. It has to go and through. I there, have to be. There are channels. You've got to be an, under an association. And then comes a platform that says, no, Sbatli, just bring your Bring, bring your combi. Just buy a combi and bring it on the platform. We'll get customers who request. Already, that platform, number one, remember I said earlier on, we, we are in an industry where we need to follow the rules and regulations of that industry. And the National Land Transport Act itself, before we even go to the bill, what does it say? It says you need to have an operator's license to operate. It, it says you must have a meter. What is the meter? The meter now has become a digital platform, which is an app. You must have an app in your phone, which you can use to get customers the, and also to charge your customers on fairly. But there's a lot of protocols that have been jumped just because people want to, you know, it's, it's a ripe market. It's a market that's been mm -hmm. created. So the person that you're taking food from, you can understand how they will fight. Especially when you don't have the right registration documents exactly. that are you required. Exactly. Ne you need to have registered throughout and followed the right parts for you to be operating. Mm -hmm. But so perhaps in defense of the e-hailing companies mm -hmm. who are not here to represent themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it, the issue really goes back to how these e-hailing companies are registered. Because they are actually registered with CPRO as software companies. So perhaps that's where the change needs to start and get the right registration papers of these companies to be registered as transport companies and not just tech or software companies. And then after that, they can then be accepted by the e-hailing industry and be register as a, a transport company that is rendering services to yeah, the public look, of South you know, Africa. Fun, fun enough, yesterday... Uh, we had a conversation regarding these issues in the healing industry and uh, they, there was a lot of uh, uh, stuff that was read <laughs> with the Department of Transport regarding registration, applications and licenses and stuff. I liked it, honestly. I liked that part where companies need to go through certain bodies. But in this instance, it's quite easy. We, we, you know, we have a situation that's easy that we have made so complicated. You know, when you want to make an easy situation complicated, you bring chaos, and people focus on the chaos, not on the situation. You Like now, there's a lot of items that are on the bill that are already on the National Land Transport Act already. Why do we have to repeat stuff that is already in the Well, it is, it is an amended bill, and I think the reason why it's important for this 
this bill to 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 be amended is because there are many sectors that are actually excluded uh, in in the bill that's the of course the national land transport amended uh-huh. bill uh-huh. and a lot of e-hailing drivers and operators have always said that many of the issues that come up out of this industry, the safety issues, the wage uh-huh. issues, uh-huh. the the issue of uh, unfair working conditions, and also just when you look at the 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 the, the, the collaboration and the working you, you agreement between these e-hailing companies and the drivers, it's not one, it's not a healthy one, and that the answers really will come from the signing and implementing of this bill and, you, you and know, implementing it into law. You know, Sibatli, this is why I'm saying. There is a situation that's already there that is compliant. And people have brought chaos to make it look non-compliant or there's an issue. What does the National Land Transport Act say? Before we go to the amended, it says an operator must be issued an operating what? License. Now, the drivers that you're talking about, they are not what? Operators. They are actually workers. They work as independent the, contractors. So, yes... I think this is what has happened throughout the years. There's been not a proper education on the industry. There's only been a focus on the customer side where customers are fed that ah, these people are wrong, are wrong, are wrong. But on the compliance side, people have never looked at that. Why are these guys fighting? It's issues of compliance. Now, before, if you check 2010, who serviced the tourists who were servicing people around moving? Mm-hmm. It was meter taxi. Meter taxis are businesses. If you go back to the ranks, these people have registered businesses. You register a business, you put your cars, you take, you take your cars to the department, and you get the operator's license, and then you start operating as a business. So, so let's come back to your business, though. Yeah. So the difference is that your drivers or your operators are registered and, under Santaco. Yes. So that's, that, that, that is what is... What was supposed to happen before? There is a workers' union. Mm-hmm. It represents workers. There is a union for transporters. It's Santaco. People go and register at Santaco, and they with their vehicles at Santaco, and then they they get the operator the the, the 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 accreditation there to operate not on routes. E-hailing roams around. Any car that's on a, on, on a platform of ride sharing, it roams in any place. Because you pick up somebody here, you drop them off in Pretoria, you get another trip to the airport. Because that's how it is. It, it's convenience. We don't need to take the tech side away uh, from this. So our company is offering that solution to say, look, we still have the same solution. Nothing has changed. We're not reinventing the wheel. Mm-hmm. The market is there. We don't need to come and start saying, oh, we are trying to come up with the rocket science. We have a flying uh, tech. No, no, no. We're not doing that. Hailing from a software or an app, you're going to call it at your house or at a place where you are, and it will come and pick you up. The service hasn't changed. The issue is just that we're working with a body that is now, people are ju- they're just cleaning their house. Mm. That's what they do. They're mm. do cleaning their house and making sure the industry is regulated and it's properly working well. So on our end, we, 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 I, I also want to be sensitive on this issue that, you know, w- once customers think of, Santaco, when they hear the word Santaco, the first thing that runs in their mind, hey, taxi violence. There's going to be shooting when I'm in a car and and the same people that are driving you today are the same people that are gonna drive you on our platform. Because they are the same people who've always been driving you on Bolt, Uber, and in driver or even our platform. Mm, mm. The same driver has got two, three apps in there for. That's true. So there's there's the service is the same. The issue that we are saying we're happy about with having partnered with Santaco is on the operator side. We are saying we don't want to just take drivers and put them because here, here's a loophole, especially I'll show you. Do you know why there's high crime in this country on these platforms? It's because people use SIM cards that are not recard. You can go and pick up, right now we can buy a SIM card on the street. We put it in a cell phone, we download the app, we, you, what people do is they request cancel or they request when the driver accepts, they cancel. So it increases the number of trips, your profile. And then you see there's 10, 15 trips that this customer is taking mm-hmm. when, you are, when you're accepting the trip. You say, okay, it's a new client. You go and pick up the customer only to get there to be uh, uh, pointed a gun or to be shot or to be hijacked, robbed. There's a lot of crime happening every day because of these issues. So that's what we want to 
That's what the solution is from taxi to fix that. Mm. Then you've got an issue on the passenger side as well. I was in Deben the other time, I'll tell you now. I used one of these platforms when I was in Deben. I went for a meeting. Um, I see a profile that was there. It's a lady that was supposed to come and pick me up. The car uh, arrives. I check, it's a guy. I ask the guy, hey, you know, we are from Gauteng here. We know what happens in Gauteng. If it's a different picture, something has happened to yes, the owner of that the, car. The pro profile renting is quite rife in the industry as well. I told the guy to open the boot to check what if the lady was in the boot. I told him, open it. He opened the boot. There wasn't anybody. Then I asked him, my brother, why there's a profile of a lady? Guess what he joked with me? He said, oh, I'm trans. I'm a transgender person. Imagine. <laughs> of and this is a really serious issue because it's a, it's that's a, how hijackings it's serious. end up taking place. You, you can't joke because I'm going to make a decision that I'm jumping into that car. The next moment, I'm gone. <laughs> You're at my funeral. That's how all these criminal activities take place. We hear of e-hailing drivers uh, allegedly raping passengers. Yes. That's how so we get it's, there. It's, it's both sides. So we are coming in to say we are doing the chicken and egg, uh, you know, balancing on both sides to say safety for the passenger, safety for the, for the driver. But it all goes back to say, you know, safety, you can't guarantee people 100% safety. So there's also extra gadgets that we actually do have for the driver and extra gadgets that we also do have for the... What, for do, what do those entail? Uh, panic buttons. I'll tell you, we do have a panic button on our app. That thing, it's as useless as anything else. Of course. Because we know that the panic button... The first thing criminals do these days when they, when they want to rob you or disarm you, or if you ask any e-hailing driver, what criminals steal first? They steal your cell phone. If you steal my cell phone, where am I going to press the panic button? Where? Crime in South Africa and crime in Europe, in America, two different things. Our crime here, we know our guys here who do crime, our own local people, we know how they are aggressive. And of course, they are always ahead of the game. So they are aware of these safety, so-called safety features. Yes, that are in the but, app. but it's the drivers themselves that have said that yes. these are, are, are useless. Yes. These are not helping us. Drivers, an e-hailing expert once said that it's at least one e-hailing driver that dies a day in South Africa. Oh, and you, know, you know the statistics that we got yesterday? I got, somebody was speaking yesterday when we're having the meeting with the Department of Transport, yes, we had a Zoom, <laughs> it lasted three hours. One guy spoke. He mm -hmm. said, the statistics, you're saying one, it's now five. They die on a five daily basis. Five people die on a, on a daily basis. Almost 10 people get robbed on a daily basis. Those and are where the are these stats coming from? I don't know. That's what you, you, you pointed out yesterday. So what I'm trying and to... And this includes... The, the, the taxi industry as a whole or just e-hailing? No, you were talking about the e-hailing. This guy is from the e-hailing side. I think it's part of uh, EPCO, if I'm not... Uh, uh, you know, EPCO, um, it's a council for... It's, it's a can interim council that they put for, for e-hailing. It's their own council that these guys put the drivers. I, 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 I interview quite a lot, but I, I, I'm not aware. I'm yeah, not so they... It's EPCO. It's uh, it's actually recognized. It's a recognized. They actually recognize that that association. Or I those know people. the e-hailing uh, partners council. Yes, that's EPCO. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's EPCO. So those so that's guys. that's Temba that you spoke to. Ah uh, no, there was a lot of guys on the meeting. It's almost like four or five guys from from there because there was a lot of people. I think we were almost forty or fifty in that meeting. Wow. That happened yesterday, but look, we. we as I was saying, we're trying to balance. It's a chicken and egg that we're trying to come up with. We're not, we're not, what we're bringing to the customer is we're guaranteeing you a safety. You've got someone to ask because we've got a call center. You lose your phone. You know the incidents is where you forget a phone, a purse or something in a boat or Uber car. You go on your app, you start texting now or you call the driver is not picking up or it's another issue. So with us, you drop something or you've got an inquiry or you've got a query that you have with the driver, you're going to call a, uh, a call center uh, a number. It's there on the app. You call the call center number and then the call center will speak to you, attend to your inquiries, and then we move. If there's a dispute between you and the driver in an incident where you know people rate, this is for the driver side now. If you get in my car and I'm driving you, that's what most passengers do. And we just don't get along over something. Customers, at the end of the trip, they tend to bed, rate you bad. 
So the app companies that are around right now, what they do is if they just see a bad rating, they block the driver. They they don't if, they don't even inquire from both ends what has happened. There's no rehabilitation mm. rehabilitation of the driver. You block me, you've blocked my income, my bread and butter. And that has been one of the frustrations expressed yes. by drivers. Yes, who, who the gives industry? them the authority to block before they converse mm. with a with the driver? So with mm. us, we we'll converse, we try to rehabilitate the driver, find out if it's retraining, retrain. Like now, we emphasize we don't do training on the phone, like what other platforms do. We know people tend that because of COVID, but we emphasize on etiquette. We do physical training at our offices for the driver. When they leave, we give them uh, a certificate that they need to take, and then we take it from them. Yeah. Very interesting. So you've got uh, so so it's very clear that your customer has somebody to talk to should they have any grievances, safety issues, or maybe should they lose something in in. In, in the vehicle, w what else does the, the customers tend to benefit from your company, which may not be necessarily offered by your competitors? For instance, the price factor, are you charging per kilometer? Yes, we charge per kilometer. And this is one thing that um, I, I don't want to delve into industry politics, but I'll tell you we charge price per kilometer and per minute as well. Just like how these guys charge. So how do you charge? How much is it per kilometer? It's eight rand fifty. Okay, and then does that mean if you're also going to look at the minute element, how does that? Yeah, model it's work? it's fifty cents per minute for now. But what I'll tell you, the price that we have put is interim for us as a company, because we are supposed to get a price from either the minister or the MMC after they've consulted with the industry, which is the operators, mm -hmm. to say what makes sense. This is one of the things that the drivers are crying about as well. To say, prices just drop. Anyway, the, the discounts a, are endless. The discounts are endless. Prices drop any, any, anyhow, anyway. And, and sometimes the drivers are not consulted. Remember when you were riding uh, the platforms before, you used to see sedans, sedans. Yes. Then they introduce the hatchbacks. Yes. They name them a name. Mm -hmm. Those hatchbacks, they are cheaper than the, the 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 sedans. Quite significantly cheaper. And now what they've done is they've said to the sedans drivers, you can go and you can also register under that uh, that that go. That which category, is the, 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 which, that, is, which, which means they'll it, then be cheaper. Earning even less than what so drivers about. drivers are forced because customers want just cheap uh, stuff for for to, to travel look now there's something brewing that you don't know right now it's brewing and it's gonna be chaos if it's not dealt with now you see we we tested the bajaj the cute mm -hmm. The, those you remember? are the mini, the yes. tiny cars. I remember when you were still yes. uh, with we the emergency the, taxi. We tested the cute. Those were your main vehicle models, right? Not really our main, but we're testing. What we're trying to do is we're testing the eco-friendly vehicles and to do intra-city, like, you know, cheap uh, tra transport. We were told by Santaco, you've mentioned, for sure I've been with the industry for a very long time. If you don't listen to the industry, you're going to cause people to be killed. People are going to die. You're going to have blood, blood on your hands because... People are actually, unfortunately, already dying. So many of the issues that you're touching on seem to be regulatory-related issues. Do you believe that uh, legislative intervention could come up with a viable solution for some of the issues we've touched on here? And if so, how? Definitely. I think what the government is trying to do right now, it's, it's good. But I think they need to consult with the operators, the with the industry. They, they, they can't call people who are reading stuff on the internet and then they come and try to use those. They need to ask the people on the ground who are using the platforms. So I think this engagement that they're trying to do is important because it will fix the wrongs that are already there. If they're adding stuff that has been loopholes, that have, you know, to tighten it, because, you know, once you sign a bill into an act, you're going to wait for a long time. And that long time, you can't just say after two years you remove it, and you know. So it's cast in stone. <laughs> yes. So I, 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 I really applaud the movement that they've done, but I also want to ask them: please consult the industry and ask the people who are operating. Call those Uber drivers. Mm -hmm. Call the meter taxi. Sit down with them and say, guys, this is what we've proposed. How do we fix it? Don't call us app companies. Don't call us. The only time you're gonna come to us 
is after you've consulted with the users of the of the platforms then you come and say okay we want to look at one two three four things how do we you know fix this but normally it's supposed to be operator in government they do with those things they need to consult the operators yeah. so we have seen in south africa many players come into the industry uh, and you know not just startups we've seen local startups yes enter the industry but we've also seen bigger players like your dds uh -huh. come and not even make it past the first year and i think uh, dd closing shop in south africa was quite a shocker because they are thriving um, everywhere else uh -huh. uh, across the globe um, we saw another startup next now also closing shop in the industry what do you think are some of the factors that contribute to this? What are these companies grappling with? Okay, so I want to speak for our local e-hailing guys first before I go to the internet. The, the startups, the yes. The startups. Um, this is something that I also encountered at some point. This industry needs you to have deep pockets. Funding. Yes, you need funding. Now, you're going to see that most of the departments that are there, you know, once stuff goes through government uh, in terms of funding, there are certain structures and legislation like what we're talking about, stuff that has been pre-put there to say this is the steps that you need to follow. Now, there's no accommodation much for technology. We spoke of fourth industrial revolution of uh, technology, but there was little or none paid to say that was done to say what are the key for IARA uh, 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 sectors that we need to fund and help because technology needs funding. Absolutely. Uh, 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 if you look at uh, the history of your Bill Gates, your Steve Jobs, whoever that you see in tech, they did not uh, just get money from, or they did not just start and start getting customers. There's a there's a cooling off period that you need as well as a company where you're making a lot of losses before you even start making profit because you're getting into the industry, you're advertising, you're marketing, you're pushing. That whole space, most of the startups, what they do have is, oh, they invest in the platform. After investing in the platform, then they need to maintain the platform as they go. Now they've got uh, overheads of uh, employees that they have and they're not making money yet, you know. And then they've, so it, it boils out to funding, sustainability. They are not able to sustain themselves to a point where they break even. So if uh, the authorities be are listening or could hear us that to say, look, in the tech space, please open the doors for us, especially transport, especially anything software and tech. That way you're going to find a lot of guys who have developed platforms, who are developing platforms to say local, this is a solution for this industry. This is a solution for whatever market that is there. You fund them, then they can be competitive as well. Mm. Because right now, there is no com the, the competition is it's, it's, it's very it's very tough. Speaking of tough competition, mm -hmm. do you think that the anti-competitive practices have a huge role to play in this, especially because this is an industry that is just dominated by one or two big companies who are mostly I will, global companies? I will tell you now. The Competitions Commission is supposed to look at fairness in pricing. Before, you know, this is why I said we need to look at how our legislation is and dovetail everything. Because Anti-Competitions Commission is supposed to look at, okay, you guys are in transport, right? You platforms. You're operating uh, platforms that help transport move. Now, your pricing, how is your pricing set? If you go back to the bill or to the to the um, the bill states that, and the actual act states that, it is the prize is given by the minister or by the M MEC after the as with most industries. Yes, it's 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 regulated like that. Now, if then companies come in, we come in and then we charge. I, I'll tell you, we can even start charging if we want customers. You want to enter any free market, any free market. The best way to start your business in a free market is to lower your price. You lower your price. I can start now and say my price is 2 rand 50 per kilometer. Customers are going to jump. Drivers are going to see a lot of requests. At the end of the day, is that guy making any money? Nothing. So the issue of pricing and competition hasn't been looked at fairly. Fairly so. Uh, the issues of discounts, because I can wake up in the morning and say, oh, we want to give out 30% discount or 50% discount. Who's going to compensate? They might compensate because they've got deep 
pockets, but is it fair in terms of the competitions commission uh, 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 rules and regulations? Mm. We need to look at that. So imagine now, text is going to my melody. One person who's got 50 taxes or 60 taxes decides, ah, yeah, 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 me, I want to be busy today. It's a Friday. Oh, I need to pay uh, SA taxi their money. And they decide, okay, the tax is 20 rand from Pretoria to my melody. I'm going to charge 15 rand or 10 rand. You get what I mean? Mm. It's going to be chaos. So we need to have a uniform price at some point. Then customers can choose now because of the service, not because of the price, because of the service. Let the service speak for itself, not the price. If you get in a particular app and it's dirty the car, and you know that I request this particular app and they do proper checks on the vehicles, then you're good. Yeah. So has the business gone live? So we're launching on the 22nd of uh, September. Right now, we are, we are live. You can download the app. Uh, that's live uh, in our tech side. But mm -hmm. for you to request, you can start requesting from the 22nd of uh, September. For now... All the, the, the drivers that are already there on the platforms can register on our platform. Then we also help them with uh, making sure that they are compliant on the other side as well. In terms of operators, uh, permits and stuff, we'll take them to, to Santaco and they will help them with that as well. So perhaps as a parting shot, tell your prospective customers why they need to support this business. <laughs> okay, uh, to, to our customers, who are the riders, would want to ensure you that, would make sure that you're secure, you're safe. We have a call center. You can call there each time you have a problem. You either choose to email, call the call center and speak to us. Um, to the operators, I'd like to say your safety also is guaranteed because we're also effective in the customers that take you and the extra features that we've put on the driver app as well to protect you before a trip happens or before you accept a trip. And uh, lastly, I would like to say to our riders, look, Try us. We don't want to say support us because we are just local. We don't want to be a local app and give a bad service. Try us and see the behavior of the operators. We are here to listen to you. We are here to make sure that we give a better transport service uh, to South Africa in the space of taxis. So if you want to download our app, you can download our app on all Play Stores. Uh, it's Taxi Ride, T-E-K-S-I, Ride. Uh, for the drivers, is T-E-K-S-I, driver. So you can find it on all, all stores, which is Google Play Store, Huawei Store, uh, and, uh, and, and Apple Store. Well, there you have it. That's uh, Prince Pirikisi, who is a tech entrepreneur and the co-founder of South Africa's latest e-hailing company, and that's Taxi. Go and get yourself a Taxi.